Hello, and welcome to Let's Play For Honor. This episode is going to be about the Warden and introducing you to multiplayer and online play. I'm going through the customization right now, just giving everyone a quick glance at some of the options available. You can edit colors, your character's gender, their skin color. You can alter the color of their outfits, emblems. You can get gear that changes how your armor looks, your weapons look. It's not complete customization, but it's enough that I have fun with it. I like the way my characters look. Here are a few executions also that you can set up. The game offers a variety, but I don't know why they cost so much. Same for taunts. It's a lot of fun ones that you can... yeah, fun. Here's the movesets if you wish to take a good look at them. Every character has their own moves and combos and little attributes that they can do. We're going to be going over the basic videos really quickly. The Warden's combos are pretty simple. They are a Vanguard class, so it's not entirely surprising. But with enough mixing up of different movesets, guard breaks, dodges, parries, and blocks, you can make quite a difference in the combat. Now, as is mentioned, the Warden has good overhand blows. And this whole zone effect right here can be a little bit tricky. It can catch people off guard, especially when unlocked. The running attack is useful for catching people who are off guard, but in general, people will block it, or even parry it. The shoulder bash is a really useful move for the Warden. In between mix-ups, you can use it to break apart your own combos and suddenly catch enemies off guard. It'll push them back. You can use it to knock people off ledges. The longer you charge it, the further they go. This counter strike is very, very contextual. You have to block an overhand strike before you can do it. You're going to want to have really quick reflexes to get any use out of it. The advanced video is a bit more of the same. The Vanguard classes are fairly simple to understand. Now, the side light attack for the Warden is probably their best move. For that reason, people will often guard to the side instead of overhand against a Warden. Their overhand attacks are a bit easier to react to. When you're charging up the shoulder charge, you do want to be careful that you're not just sitting there waiting for it to go, because they'll just sit there wait, and then the moment they see you fly forward, they'll dodge. This is just a simple tactic for all characters, really. You want to throw people against objects. Fainting. It's something I'm personally not very good at, but it is almost necessary. So we're going to get into seeing a few battles of me playing as the Warden. The Warden is not my best class. I would say I'm kind of bad as the Warden. But I can manage to get by, even if you're not good at a particular character, just knowing about parrying, blocking of general play you can manage to get by. The Centurion can be quite a rough fight. They're very hard for a Warden to deal with, to counter, to get against. You've really got to get those parries in when you need them because of you're going to not be able to block most attacks and all of the punches and grapples are going to just drain your stamina like nothing.
Against groups, I would say the Warden is not exactly great. They can get by with enough parrying, but their block isn't anything in particularly great. They don't have the best of zone attacks. They do have fairly mobile attacks, like you saw there. I'm able to move forwards while attacking. Some classes can't really manage that. Against other Wardens, the fight is very balanced, of course, because if you both have the exact same moves, the exact same type of attacks. Until somebody else joins in the mix. When fighting against a single opponent, of course, having an ally can really help. Here's a little bit of a duel against someone who is about equal skill to me. Maybe even a bit better than me. Heavily relying there on getting the shoulder charge off and then leading into multiple attacks. The side attacks getting in some quick blows before the finishing. Again, very useful those side attacks because of the two hit combo. Another fight against the exact same person. You see how important parrying is in multiplayer? Because pretty much everyone does it. You also want to be careful. I messed up right here. You don't really want to do heavy attacks right after parrying someone because of they'll have enough time to block it after. Or even parry it themselves. And then with, like this, when you run out of stamina, you're easier to knock down. You can still parry while you're out of stamina and while it's regenerating. Getting revenge in a 1v1 is not exactly typical. And then, of course, I had her help earlier. It's time for them to get some help. I'm not really angry about this, because it is Dominion mode. I'm not going to lose my head over this. But you get used to fighting in whatever mode you're in. In Duel, that's where you get the one-on-ones. In Dominion, you're going to see a lot of group fights. Like so. And you've got to learn how to fight in all those different scenarios. In this game, it is very much possible to even the odds and to be the underdog and win a battle. You also never know when reinforcements are going to show up. Now, the Warden does not have perfect blocking. You can still take damage from heavy attacks through your guard. Also, as you just saw there, you can parry unblockable attacks. There are unparryable attacks, but those are more so grapples and punches and kicks. Even light attacks can be parried if you're quick enough. Something you'll see quite commonly is I mix up a lot of my combos of which direction I'm coming from. You don't want to always hit from the same side. Even just going from the opposite side cannot be great. Oh, I didn't even realize that skipped there. Still no idea why that happens. Because if you go right and left or left and right all the time and you're very predictable, people will predict you.
the Warden is a class that can't really help out too much other people in big group fights like this. You don't have huge attacks or ways to knock people around, really. The best you have is your charge, your shoulder bash. Which, that you can always surprise people with and catch them off guard in the midst of a battle and then just knock them away, send them flying, or send them off a ledge while they're fighting someone else. Here we're going to see an example of the shoulder bash and how useful it is around cliff edges. We saw it in the little videos, but right there is another example. The longer you charge, the further they go. Against an assassin class here, like the Peacekeeper, you're going to want to use your light attacks more so. Parrying can be a bit hard. You may want to rely more on blocking. You'll also want to be ready to guard break. Because the assassins in general have a lot of good grabs and then follow up with stabs that affect with bleed or have nice quick combos. And we're going to see here, with the help of parrying, with the help of blocking, with the help of revenge, you can fight more than one opponent at once. You can hold out, even as a Vanguard class, which doesn't have as much variety or isn't as specific or as uh, perhaps complex as a lot of other classes are. The Warden is kind of a jack-of-all-trades master of none. It's what the game is mostly based around. But that was the Warden. Of course, even a good Warden is still liable to deal with connection problems. I'll see you next time.